Journey to the Underworld. The mouth of the dead had to be opened before he could journey to Osiris, so that he might plead and answer in accordance with the priest's instructions. The opening of the mouth was of the greatest importance. It was performed upon the statue that had been made of the deceased and set in the tomb. The statue was placed on a mound, symbolizing the funeral mountain. There, leaning against the arch beyond which the mummy lay, it received the fluid, the caw of the deceased, that entered the image through the nape, causing the statue to come to life. Its mouth was opened by the priests according to a ceremony described in the Book of the Dead. A vignette in one of the papyri which have come to us shows a man seated upon a pedestal which has the shape of the emblem of right and truth, the ma'at. The dead man, we learn from the scroll, is a scribe named Ami, now called Ami Osiris, for like all the blessed deceased, he was supposed to have become one with the great Osiris. This fusion with the Godhead was in Ani's time considered the reward for those who had escaped punishment. Standing before the statue of Ani Osiris, a priest clad in a panther skin holds in his right hand a wand, with which he is about to touch the statue's lips. Below the image is this text. Osiris, the scribe of Ani, triumphant, saith, May the god Ptah open my mouth, and may the god of my city loosen the swathings, even the swathings which are over my mouth. Moreover, may Thoth, being filled and furnished with charms, come and loosen the bandages, even the bandages of Seth, which fetter my mouth. And may the god Tem hurl them back at those who would fetter me with them, and drive them back. May my mouth be opened, may my mouth be unclosed by Shu with his iron knife, wherewith he opened the mouths of the gods. I am the goddess Sekhet, and I sit upon my place in the great wind of heaven. I am the great goddess Sa, who dwelleth among the souls of Heliopolis. Now as concerning every charm and all the words which may be spoken against me, may the gods resist them, and may each and every one of the company of the gods withstand them. Ptah, the patron god of artists and artisans, and Thoth, whose magical words became flesh when they brought the world into being, are invoked as the protectors of statues and incarnations. They will put to flight Seth the Destroyer, the enemy of Osiris. Shu, the god of the air, is called upon, since he is the breath necessary for speaking. He stands erect, supporting the heavenly vault, whose curve is like the hollow of the mouth. In early times the gods too had their mouths opened, and Shu performed this magical act. Ani identifies himself with several deities, for instance with Sekhet and Sa. This stratagem endows him with supernatural power, as we shall discover. Once having his mouth opened, Ani will begin his perilous journey. He will meet evil spirits, but powerful words will drive them away. In his guidebook, The Book of the Dead, Ani will find the answers to all the questions with which the underworld will burden him. When he reaches the river where the old ferryman is waiting, Ani will speak thus to him, O oh, thou guardian of the mysterious boat, I hasten, I hasten, I hasten, I come to see my father Osiris. Then speaks the boat's hull, Tell me my name. Darkness is thy name. Then the voice of the mast commands, Tell me my name. He who leadeth the great goddess on her way is thy name. The sail says, Tell me my name. Nuit, goddess of heaven, is thy name, replies Ani, and his answers, if uttered in the right tone, are accepted. The boat seems to stand for the universe. Its hull is Keb, the god of the dark earth, in which are the caves of the underworld. The mast is Chu, the air god, who stands upright, holding in his outstretched arms, as if they were the sail's yard, the arched body of Nuit, goddess of heaven, symbolizing the sail. After having left the boat, the scribe is called upon again. Who then art thou? Several voices ask. What is thy name? I am he who lives under the flowers. The dweller in his olive tree is my name. Pass thou, the gods say, and Ani reaches the city to the north of the olive tree. 
New questions assail him, which, like the answers, are clad in the code of occult wisdom, whose beholder alone will pass freely the twenty-one pylons, the fifteen doors, and the seven halls that lead to the judgment chamber. What, then, didst thou see there, meaning in the city through which any has passed? The leg and the thigh is the enigmatic answer. What didst thou pay to them? Let me see rejoicings in those lands of the Fenku. And what did they give unto thee? A flame of fire and a tablet of crystal. What then didst thou do therewith? I buried them by the furrow of Manat as gifts for the night. What then didst thou find by the furrow of Manat? A scepter of flint, the name of which is giver of words. What then didst thou do to the flame and the tablet of crystal after thou hadst? I uttered words over them in the furrow. I extinguished the fire. I broke the tablet, and I made a pool of water. Come then, they say, and enter through the door of the hall of double Maapi, the judgment hall, for thou knowest us. But the wanderer is not yet free, since the bolts of the door, the lintels, the threshold, and the sockets ask to be told their names. Any, however, has learned the answer from the Book of the Dead, and thus at last the door opens to allow him entrance to the judgment hall, where Osiris will try him.